Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. Welcome to Transfer Hub, reacting to Aston Villa, rumours, links, noise surrounding potential players coming to Aston Villa, but also leaving Aston Villa. You've all been waiting for this one. I've had people messaging me saying, where's your Cyril and Gonj episode? Why are you not doing one? I've waited and waited to bide my time to see the situation of what has been going on. Any time that the first rumour comes out that Aston Villa have bid, Aston Villa have bid this, Villa have done that, Villa have done that, but without seeing anything happening surrounding that player, surrounding Villa, any more noise, then I'm very reluctant to you know, say that Aston Villa have bid for a player when we possibly haven't. So... We've got some noise coming out today on Cyril and Gonj, and that is Aston Villa have taken information from Cyril and Gonj, and their interest is real. No offer has been made yet, and that is coming from Sasha Tolovleri. Uh, so that is where this rumour and this link is now coming from. Um, and it's an exciting player. It's one that fills a position that I think potentially... We are looking to strengthen. It feels one where I think we've still got options, but also it's a young player. It's a player of a certain age that has got the scope to grow. And I think one thing about any player that's going to be coming into Aston Villa is that you can look at how they've done before and think, okay, that's fine. But how is Unai going to improve this player? How is Unai going to get the best out of this player? And potentially, you will soon see the best version of that player that you have ever seen working alongside Unai. And I think this window is one of those where teams generally don't do much business, but there is business to be done. And I think, you know, since Unai's come in, we've we've been under that sort of, we've been under that phase of if the right deal can be done and if the deal suits Villa and it's something that we are actively looking to do, then we will make that deal happen. I think we've had managers in the past that will just react and go, yeah, I'll have him. Um, yeah, what are you saying? You're going to get us him? Is he available? Yeah, we'll have him then. And we sort of, in this window especially, just end up with a load of rubbish that we don't want, that we're not going to play. And, and Unai's not that type of manager. Like, Unai will only bring in... And we saw this last January when fans were crying out for a striker and we didn't sign one that if they're not available, if they're not the right player, if they don't suit our system, if they don't suit the way we play, there's no point having them. Unai likes to work with a, with a smaller-shaped squad anyway. Um, so I just think that's the way he is. And, you know, what I love about Unai is that it looks like he cares about the money as well. And he cares about, you know, the bigger picture where, man, like I say, managing the past, you know, that, that, have, that have signed anyone if it was offered to him. So Unai is a little bit different. So, yeah, let's have a look then in Transfer Hub fashion at Cyril Ngonj and we'll see where he will play, where he would potentially feature um, for Aston Villa as well. And so we'll share the screen with you now. So where does Cyril Ngonj play? Predominantly he plays on the right-hand side. So he could suit Aston Villa in two positions. He could suit Aston Villa supporting Ollie Watkins in the role that we see making up the box midfield. So you can see that this player that plays alongside Watkins drops into that area and will make that box midfield with Kamara, Louise McGinn and a DRB in that role or a Zaniolo. So I could see him playing in that area, which would give us a lot more flexibility. I think, you know, rotating, you could ro rotate DRB with Bailey and vice versa. The good thing about Aston Villa is a lot of our players are interchangeable, so they can move into different positions. God of the days where we sign a player and we get linked with a player and it's like, oh, but that's McGinn's position. What happens? We can't take McGinn out of the team. Gone of those days, you know, and, and I remember it where we'd be linked with a player and, and we'd get... Everybody would be up in arms. But he plays there. Where's he going to go? That must mean he's being sold. It's not the case anymore. 
These players can move and shift around and, and fill in different roles when needed. Or Cyril Ngonj could go into his more preferred position and go into that area there. But it also gives us adaptability, it gives us flexibility to move these players all around the pitch, which is really, really exciting from an Aston Villa point of view. So Cyril Ngonj, 23 years of age, another left-footed player. So for score having valued at 5.8 million, you can see that he's predominantly playing as an attacking midfielder or a right winger. His heat map, very, very heavy on that right-hand side, as you can see. So you could see him playing in that Bailey-esque role on that right-hand side. Um, so you can see that his attacking rating is 73. This season, he's got a sofa score rating of 6.95, which is five, just lower than my little seven bracket that I like to see on sofa score. I think if you're averaging a seven across the course of a season, then you are a really good benchmark, and that's a really good rating if you're hitting those sevens every week. He's played 17 games this season, started 15. He scored five goals. He has a goal conversion of 13%. He's got two assists. He's averaging 32.6 touches per game. Accuracy per game, 66%. In his own half, 77%. We have got his ball recoveries per game, 2.5. Successful dribbles, 47%. And total duels, one we have got, uh, 41%. So, you know, I I'm excited by this one. I think it's you know, a profile of somebody that we, we should be looking at, a younger player coming through. Is he the finished article? No. But with Unai's stewardship and man management and the capabilities of what Unai can unlock in a player, then it's, it's one of those where there's great potential. So I like it. I like the link. I think he's a good player. Very attacking, very dynamic, very fast. What I like about him when I've seen him as well is that he's head up, always head up, looking who can I pass to, who who's a good option in front of me. So I think I like that as well. Final ball, okay, you know, could be better. The one goal I would tell you all to go and have a look at is his bicycle kick, which is absolutely sublime technique. Uh, he can finish and he's just an exciting player to be linked with. So if we have a look at his market value on uh, transfer market, it's 6 million euros. I think when we apparently put the bid in uh, a couple of days ago, which we didn't, I don't think, it was around that 9 million euros mark. So I think that is a that is a good fee. He has played for Belgium at every level apart from the under-21 level. So he's made uh, appearances all in his youth career at with Belgium. Uh, his career has started with Club Bruges, uh, PSV under-21s. He's then also joined RKC Wildlick. Uh, he's also played for F FC Groningen. And then he's made his move for one million and thirty uh, to Hellas Verona. So he's made his career in, in Belgium and then he's moved to Italy in Serie A. So... Let's have a look at his stats per 90 as well. And this is something that I would expect to improve, um, you know, with, with great coaching. Uh, so you can see shots per 90, 2.88. Uh, tackles, 0.90. So he's making less than one. Uh, passing completion, 60%, which isn't the greatest. But like I say, I feel like this is one where you've got to look at it, look at, it at, look at his age, look at sort of, the scope of the player, and I think it's just an exciting, interesting link for Aston Villa. So, Villa fans, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below uh, on where you feel like he could fit in. Are you excited by this link and this rumour? Um, so, yes, let me know on your thoughts on the um, on the rumour of uh, Ngonj to Aston Villa. We've got some other news which isn't um, as exciting, and it is a quote. Uh, that we've got here from the mail, Sport. Uh, and this is something that just doesn't seem to be disappearing with this player. And, you know, it, it, 
it's one of them where it might be hearsay or there might be something genuinely in it. But for me, the more I hear of this noise surrounding this player, the more I'm starting to get a little bit frustrated by it and irked by it a little bit. And the only time I've seen a problem, twice I think I've seen a problem with, and we're talking about Duran, is the European game. There was a European game just before half time in one of the games, and he made a run and the ball didn't go to him. And he was throwing his arms around and he was frustrated and he was just showing a sign that I don't like. Like, I, I, like passion, as you all know, I'm a passionate Villa fan. So passion for me is fine, but it's within the right context. And at that point, I don't think we were losing the game. I think it was, I think it was level. And I just remember watching it, thinking, "Why are you doing that? Just get your head down and make the next run." A top top player just can get that out of their mind. It's like when a top striker finishes a misses a chance. And they don't go sulking for the next five minutes. They're switching their head and they're like, next chance, next chance, I'll take it. And that's the feel I should have with Duran. And I know he's 19 and I know he's young. He might be 20 now. I know he's young. But this, you've still got to start to see a level of professionalism within your game. You know, look at Bellingham. Look how young Bellingham is. You know, age, for me, age is a number. But yes, you can learn how to be more mature. You can learn how to grow as a player. But just just that, what I saw. And then lo and behold, it was the 50th minute in the game. Emery was yet to make the pitch. Emery was yet to watch five minutes of Villa. He walked out the tunnel. Duran nowhere to be seen. And then it came out that, Dur that there'd been a bit of a, a bust up. And I can, I, can under I could imagine that being true, to be fair, because of what I saw and Emery coming out and et cetera, et cetera. And then the other one, the other one is just you know he's just moaning around and, and and just yeah really needs to sort himself out. But anyway, today Unai Emery and John Duran have sometimes not seen eye to eye. He is thought to be frustrated with the decisions to to substitute him at various points during the European season. So what's happening is he's coming off at half time. So. I can, un I can understand any player knocking on the manager's door. I've got no problem with that. But you've got to be delivering on the pitch. You've got, to, you've got to be showing what you're all about on the pitch. And I just think at this moment in time, nobody could be questioning Unai Emery substitutions. Not, not one player should be questioning an Unai Emery substitution because every one of those players have dramatically improved. And this has come from the male sport. And just the more I see this noise, you know, there's there's no smoke without fire, is there, with stuff like this? It, there's just not. Look at Leeds United. You know, they've sent... Uh, Jed Spence has been recalled to Spurs because Fark and Spence have had this little... You know, it was bubbling along and it's it's came out to be true. So, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit frustrated by reading and seeing all of these things surrounding John Duran. And I think he has got to realise that this club are at the top end of the Premier League about to achieve some big, big things. And all you've got to do is get your head down and knuckle down. That is all you've got to do. You get given an opportunity, you take it and perform on the pitch. If you don't perform... You come off that pitch and that's what's been happening. So I don't really understand where that frustration is coming from, really. Um, and it's starting to get on my nerves a little bit. So, yeah, you can say I'm a little bit frustrated with this Duran thing, this loan thing. I spoke about yesterday that there was talk of him wanting to go to AC Milan. So, yeah, the more I read, the more I dislike and... Yeah, he needs to just, my advice is just get your head down and start playing football. And hopefully it can start tonight by bagging a goal against Middlesbrough and then we can move on. He can get some confidence and we can keep going that way because 
yeah, it's very, very frustrating. So, yeah, that's the end of this Transfer Hub episode. So just to reiterate, for any newbies watching Transfer Hubs, it is me reacting to transfer rumours, to links from journalists, from news outlets, linking players to Aston Villa. So that is what a transfer hub is all about. There may be opinion pieces like yesterday when I wanted Dybala to come to Aston Villa. There's no clickbait. I am just showcasing phrases, links, rumours that have been spoke about from journalists and news outlets. So that is what a transfer hub episode is. Hopefully I've clarified what Transfer Hub is all about for a few of you as well. So thanks everyone for watching. Up the villa. Let me know what your thoughts.